So now it's time to introduce to you a very important infinite series called the harmonic series. Anytime you see a series that has its own name, you have to be a warning like, okay, this is either going to be really hard or really important. This is kind of both of those. Um, but this is a series of just 1 over k, so 1 over the index. So 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4. The very interesting thing about this series is that it does diverge, but extremely slowly. And you're going to see this later on in this course. We don't actually have all of the tools to prove this diverges right now, but what I'm going to give is a very light proof that just shows, yeah, it must diverge given my argument, but very soon you'll see the divergent test that we have or the integral test. Those will help us find whether it converges or diverges. So first things first, what I'm always going to do, if I don't know really what I'm doing here, I'm just going to find these partial sums. So S sub one is one because one over one is one. And then S sub two is one plus one over two. Very easy to write these out. S sub three is one plus one over two plus one over three. And then S sub four is one plus one over two plus one over three plus one over four. So then to find all of these, so the first partial sum is one. The second partial sum adding these together is three over two. I won't show the work uh, for the rest of these, but this ends up being 11 over six. And then we have 25 over 12. So unfortunately, what we don't get is a nice, easy, explicit formula for the nth partial sums in looking at this right here. And what I'm about to show you isn't something that I personally as an instructor would expect you to see right away, but we want to just give some argument for the divergence of this harmonic series. And what we're going to do is look at these partial sums that have, that are a power of two. So two to the first power, two to the second power, the next one we're going to look at is two to the third power, which would be S sub eight. And the interesting thing is if we look at these nth partial sums where n is a power of two, we actually can find a pattern. So this will really establish like a subsequence within the partial sum sequence. So let's just write out uh, the eighth partial sum here real fast. So one plus one half plus one third plus one fourth plus one fifth plus one sixth, plus one seventh, plus one eighth. I'll say the harmonic series is actually hard to work with often, but man, it is super easy to develop those terms. You just gotta add one to the denominator each of the steps. Okay, so here comes the trick. What we're going to do is show that each of these partial sums right here isn't bounded. It keeps on growing and therefore will diverge. So first of all, I want to look at this right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to manipulate this term right here. What I'm going to do is change that to a one fourth. So if I change this to a one fourth, one fourth is less than one third. So what I'm saying in this case is that the fourth partial sum now must be or is strictly greater than one plus one half plus one fourth plus one fourth. The interesting important key here is that one fourth plus one fourth equals one half. So another way of thinking about this right here is that the fourth partial sum is greater than one, one plus two times one half. So right here, I have this one half and this one half. So I get two of those one halves. You might be thinking, why the heck would you write it like that? You'll see right here in one second. What I'm going to do here is exactly the same manipulation with this. I'm going to write that as one fourth. And then I'm actually going to manipulate each of these terms. I'm going to replace the one seventh, the one sixth, and the one fifth with a one eighth. So what I know is, is that the eighth partial sum is greater than one plus one half plus one fourth plus one fourth. Again, that by itself has made this less than that sum right there. Plus, and now I'm going to replace each of these with one eighth, plus one eighth, plus one eighth, and then plus that last one eighth right there. 
But what you'll see, and you might be getting a good idea on why it's these powers of two, the way that I'm grouping this together, is that this summation right here, as previously, is one half. But this is four eighths, so this is actually equal to one half. So what I've established is that the eighth partial sum is greater than one plus one, two, three of these one halves. So that's actually fully rigorous mathematically. Uh, what I'm not going to do is show the more in depth on how you would prove that the nth partial sum has this same formula right here. But what you'll see again is so S sub two, in this case right here, we have one plus one of the one half. So the first power of two is one plus one half. In this case, the fourth partial sum is one plus two times one half. So if I had two raised to the second power, so that is equal to that power. In this case, I have exactly the same formula as I had in those previous, um, but two to the third or eight is just bigger strictly bigger, one plus three times one half. So what have we shown there? Really not much, but it can be shown that if we look at the partial sums that are powers of two, or specifically of the form S of two to the ith power right there, we can show that those are strictly greater than one plus I times one half. And again, we aren't looking at the entire sequence. We're looking at a subsequence of the sequence of partial sums. But if we look at this right here, so again, looking at S8, S4, and S sub 2, we've shown that they all have this same form. Importantly, to make this statement actually exactly accurate is that for, for when I values bigger than one, it's greater than. When I equals one, it's actually equal to. So just so I don't make any mistakes here, I'm just going to say that this statement is just true for when I is greater than equal to one. And again, all I'm saying that there is, is that, well, this should mean an equality, not an inequality for I equals one. But importantly, we're looking at this subsequence, again, that what happens to this sequence. And what we know now is that this subsequence diverges or is unbounded. Because importantly, as I goes to infinity, this statement right here, or the one plus I to the one half, this is unbounded. This doesn't, this doesn't converge. So this goes to infinity. Therefore, if the partial sums of this form right here are unbounded, we know that that subsequence is unbounded, therefore diverges, meaning the harmonic series or this infinite series diverges. Again, in full honesty, that's a bit hand wavy, especially that last part right there, but we don't need to spend a lot of time getting through it. We're going to have a bunch of other techniques to test the divergence or convergence of this series. But at this point right here, it just seemed important, A, to introduce you to the harmonic series, that's incredibly important, and B, giving you an example of a divergent series.